All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. We have the first podcast ever of the Comeback Kids, a group of friends that met playing Halo and decided to share our, our views and thoughts about the world at large with you. So today we're going to start with something I'm sure that's been on everyone's mind. Um, what to do in the event of a zombie apocalypse. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with this, it's the... Uh, this is an outgrowth of the idea that was uh, explored in Max Brooks' book, uh, World War Z and the Zombie Survival Guide. Now, as uh, the, the four of us, uh, who I'll introduce in a moment, live in different areas around the country, we each would have a unique perspective on how to deal with this. So first, we're going to let our friends introduce ourselves, starting with uh, the next oldest member of the uh, Comeback Kids. That'll be our good friend, Max. Max, the floor, please tell the world about yourself. The floor, I have taken it. Hello, my name is Max, and as Monkey said, I am the second oldest member of the Comeback Kids, giving me seniority over the other two members. Um, I have a beard, which automatically gives me man points, so uh, I'm also the chosen one. And Yes, yes, indeed. And I feel that just about sums up my existence, so I will hand it over then to the um, sort of twins, if you might call them. So th this would be our, our, our group of uh, young, our youngest junior members. Junior members? Well, Out of the two, well, which I'm the oldest, by the way. By uh, two, months. By two months. Two months. Two months. Two oh, months. Don't oh, interrupt God. your elders. Yeah, so I am, I'm Brent. Do I go by Brent or do I go, go by, by Brent? I yeah, think I, think, I think that'd be the best. I also have a beard, so there's some definite man points in that. Uh, it's a pretty good beard, too. It's double. It's a very, no, it's a... It's a it's a pretty good beard. I like it's it. It's not bad at all. It's not. It's not a. It's not a Viking beard or anything like. It's that. not Max's beard. It's not Max's beard. Nothing is Max's beard. I help. Max him. looks like a lumberjack. Yeah, he it's does. Like Johnny Damon when he played with the Red Sox. Okay. Yeah. No baseball that reference. That's Wasted. a bit. That's a bit obscure. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, it isn't. No, it isn't. Okay. He okay. just won the World Series. Anyway. I. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna pass it off to. The Jew. Uh, uh, yes, Orn is our affirmative action Jewish hire, and that's all you really need to know. Moving on. <laughs> uh, Jewish hire, and also affirmative action. I mean, I'm not exactly the most, the only, you know, one you could call it that term here. Well, it's actually, I think out of the term, four of us, there's, there are three of us that fit the best. Yeah, actually, Max is the only, like, white <laughs> guy. Yeah, here. Max is the only Caucasian, so. He's the token white guy. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brent is Indian. Totally. I'm half Indian, half Our Hispanic. Our host, who actually hasn't introduced himself yet, is black, and I am Jewish. Yeah. See, you're, you give, you give us our religious diversity. Yeah. Wait, I don't. I think Brent is, Brent is actually religious, though. I'm, ag I'm agnostic. See. Yeah. That's like nothing. Diversity. Okay. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. All right. So. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Oren. I don't have a beard. Um. This minus ten point. Yeah. No. <laughs> Uh, occasionally when I don't shave enough, I do have a mustache, but it's not very good. Um, <laughs> it's because you're Jewish. Yeah. I, I, do, I, I could have a Jew for if I grew my hair out. Really cool. Oh, Lord. No. <laughs> I swear, it's true. No, okay. So, so, go ahead, monkey. Yeah, introduce yourself. All right. All right, so I, I'm just going to open the floor up here with, um, open up discussion, rather. All right, in the event of a zombie apocalypse, all right, I live in New York. Orrin and Brent are in Houston. And Max, I forget where you are again? He's Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania. Now, it's a class three outbreak. You know, shit's going crazy and, and we're on our way to um, you know, total Armageddon. Where do you go first? Throwing it out there. Well first move. I would say that, you know, hooking up with making getting a group together would be the first thing to do, you know? Getting mm -hmm. getting the people that you know you're gonna take with you. Okay. Brent? I agree. Weapons. But like... Food, yeah. Food food would be a big thing too. A lot of canned food stockpile. But what I see is like, what I, what I understand is like, you take hurricanes and things like that. Like, you know, natural disasters, which, which is the closest thing we have to this kind of thing. A lot of people just freak out, you know, and you go to, you go to Walmarts and grocery stores and there are no food left. You want to be prepared for that. You know, you want to, you want to have done that before anything went down. Right, so when it was like in early stages, yeah, get food. You gotta plan ahead. Yeah. Okay, Max, your two cents, please. Hmm. I'd have to 
concur with the general consensus of the food and the weapons taking first priority. Are you are you eating while we're doing this? He is eating. Okay. What kind yeah. of what kind of sandwich is it, by the way? It's sort of an Italian sandwich. Um, got some zesty sauce in here, some green peppers, provolone zesty cheese. Sauce. <laughs> what the hell is dusky sauce? <laughs> zesty. 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 Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound Italian at all. Like zesty sauce and pepper. Zesty sauce. It's it's um, Thousand Island dressing or 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 what? Um, zesty Italian that's, dressing. That's actually me. Zesty Italian dressing actually does make uh, does taste good on a sandwich. I've had it quite a few times. I used to work in a deli actually. Really? No, that's... Long time ago. Really? It was an Italian deli too. Oh, cool. In New York, no less. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> That's someone I've never mind. So, you know, not every deli in New York is run by Jews. I don't know what they tell you at your Jew meetings. That's not what I meant. <laughs> also, we don't have Jew meetings. We have Jew, we have Jew gatherings. Jubilee! That's <laughs> terrible. Go shoot yourself. I hate, like, that's an X-Men character also. And she's terrible. Yes. She got she got depowered in M Day. Everyone got depowered in M Day. Yeah, but she's better now. I don't know what the hell happened with her. But anyway, on to on to the moving on. Coming back to the zombie issue, I really think that um, living in New York, it's going to be particularly tough for for me to get anything done, like on the spot. I mean, yeah, we have tons of. Um, you know, supermarkets and things like that. But if I'm not prepared beforehand and, you know, the, the dead have risen, I'm pretty much screwed because everyone with a gun is going to turn into Captain America and go out there and try and save the world. And I'll probably get shot on my way to the bodega to get some chips. <laughs> oh, um, hold on. It's, it's, wait, wait, now. That's, that's an interesting point. Do you really think people would try, would, would try to pull the hero route and, you know, just take as many zombies as they can? I mean, I would, I would be focusing on survival. Yeah, but you like you said, people go nuts, and you know you you saw um well you weren't here for obviously for nine eleven, but you had they actually had to have cops, you know, holding people back from um trying to help. Well, wouldn't it be more likely that people would just go crazy and kind of just kind of like mass panic, not so much you know helping? I mean, they they even Max Brooks even talked about it in his book, you know, like <clears throat> excuse me. Before the Battle of Yonkers, when shit really started hitting the fan, you know, people were just one guy was riding up and down the street in his rollerblades with a um, a meat cleaver attached to a hockey stick. We were doing pretty good till he got tripped up and dragged into a sewer. Yeah, but they, they were mocking those people. Like, well, yeah, but it was like Paris Hilton and those folks. I mean, but the idea was that everyone was banding together to try and and do something, but they were un ill-prepared, ill-equipped, and they got eaten, you know? Yeah. Well, well that, that, that's also something that I wanted to talk about. Well, not, you said earlier, the dead have risen. Are we talking about, you know, prototypical zombies, the dead have risen, or are we doing, like, infected humans, you know, like a... Like, like 28 days later, sir. Yeah, like yeah. brain disease or something. Well, I mean, the, the infected human thing is more likely to actually have... What? Max. Max. Come on, Sorry. I mean, really. Sorry, we're on... Come on, we're on the air. Sorry. As it were. <laughs> so, I mean, the infected human things is a much more likely scenario that, you know, some idiot in the lab screws something up and makes people crazy. Yeah. But um, I, I thought we were... Really, <laughs> I mean, what kind of zombies are we going to focus on here? Because if, if, if we're talking like a class four outbreak of... Really fast, strong zombies. We're in trouble. We're we're fucked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think. I mean, I there's think, really. No... I can't deal with fast zombies. I man. think like, slow I don't thing, know how. Slow thing dead have risen, or maybe they can be fast, but you know, like the the kind of weaker. They're stupid, regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's really the the ability of them. Uh, the the fast moving, you know, zombies are just. We we're fucked. I mean, you cannot yeah. get away from a fast moving zombie. Yeah, they're going to run full speed, and, nonstop, and, and not get tired. Yeah, they yeah. They'll, they'll get tired, but their bodies won't realize it. Yeah, well, like they will have, like if they're infected, right? So of course they're going to reach the limit. Their bodies are going to 
you know, their muscles are going to build up lactic acid and, and eventually they will just be forced to stop because their bodies will start to break down. Yeah. But the things that would slow us down, like, you know, oh, I have a cramp. Oh, I have, you know, I'm feeling pain. Oh, I'm you know? kissing an arm, you know, like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> things like that, you know, are not going to bother them. So, let, so, so for the sake of discussion, let's focus on slow moving zombies. Yeah, prototypical, dead have risen, stupid, original Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, there we go. Now, because that's the only way we even have a, a fighting chance. I mean, even in 20, 28 days later, the only thing that saved them was they, they were still human and needed to eat and starved. Because otherwise, we were just getting our asses whooped. Yeah. That, and they were British, you know. And, oh, yeah. yeah. British. Uh, the lack of tea, and they just stopped functioning. It wasn't it was <laughs> <brutal>. <laughs> Well, it's, came around. it's three o'clock and it's tea time, but there's no tea. Oh no! <laughs> and the zombies, the zombies, they were looking at tea, but they forgot how to make it, and it's, it's and like, it made them sad. Yeah, and they definitely slowed down a bit. Like, sad zombies. Yeah. Oh God, your cowboys suck. Steve Smith is running all over you. Oh, take that, bitch! Take it. The cowboys oh, is actually in Dallas, and we're in Houston. Yeah. We have yeah, our own but... team. They suck too, but they're not the Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to be honest, I'd rather claim the Cowboys than e any of the teams you guys. Yeah, I know, play. but I, I'm just saying. I, I don't Although Warren Moon was an excellent quarterback, and you know, he 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 if he played for a better team, he probably would have won some championships. You could also you could also start your own baseball podcast. Oh, I just talk about how awesome the New York Mets are. Ooh, let's go, Mets. Hey, monkey, zombies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I just wanted to cry a little on the inside. Oh, okay. Uh, Take your time. Oh. All right, Max. Yo. So, let's say, like, do you have any guns? Nope. How would you react if, um, since I'm Pennsylvania, sort of backwoods, I've got more of that open territory where I can like just go and hide out in the hills so I probably just grab like um like melee weapons like secure a barn and like just set up a perimeter or something okay now when you say that you're in like the backwoods area about like what kind of population numbers are we talking about like closest city to me is like Harrisburg or Lancaster that's like I know no, where that is yeah like no more than like 20, 30,000, so, like, there's not many people. I, like, it's really easy. Like, if I go for, like, no more than two, three-hour drive, I'll be in, like, like five people per square mile kind of density. Mm. That's good, but you, you know what? You really, it, since we're talking about planning out here, you really need to sit down and look at a population map and see, you know, what kind of, What's around you? Because, I mean, if you're like, let's say, I know you're not, you're, you're an hour and a half outside of, of uh, Philly. Let's just say that you were. Yeah. It doesn't matter that it's still an hour and a half away because these zombies are going to follow people. Yeah, but they're, well, we're using the slow moving zombie, right? So, I mean, like... right, but it does, no, but it doesn't matter that, like, they're slow moving. If they see, like, uh, a bunch of people head out to the east and they're chasing them, they will just keep going east. And even if they lose sight of them, they're just going to keep wandering in the general direction in which they're already headed. Yeah. You know? Like, oh, I was chasing people, but now I don't see people, so I'm just going to just keep walking the direction I'm already walking. Mm. Make sense? Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. But, like, but, I mean, you have a farmland, right? So you can see around you. Well, it's hills, though. Like yeah, but... It's not like it's not like a zombie could sneak up on them. They don't know how to hide or crouch or. Zombies sneak up on well, people all the time, though. Well, that's movie logic. We're 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 all genre savvy, so. That's true. <laughs> you know, we're not we're not like a creepy house where it's like door is kind of broken. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm walking away. I'm walking away, like. <laughs> I mean, unless I absolutely positively have no choice because there's something that I can see already on my ass. Yeah, like maybe I have not eaten in a couple of days. I might think about this might be a mandatory because kind of thing. You know, so you know, the more we think about it, the more movie logic actually makes sense at times. 
Yeah, but but in the situations that they're in, like they've oh, been, yeah, God, no. they've been walking for five minutes and then they see a creepy house. Like maybe we should go in the creepy house. Maybe we like, shouldn't. Yeah, it's in the middle of the day. Yeah. I don't think we need to go into the creepy house. Or or instead of saying like, hey, it's the middle of the day and there's a creepy house, let's go in it. They'll be like, hey, you know, it's the middle of the day. Let's you know walk around for a little bit till it, you know about dusk, because you know that's the best time to go exploring when the sun's about to set. Yeah. But let's yeah. wait inside the creepy house, and then nothing happens, and they decide to leave close to the night. Yeah. Yeah. Or one of them gets eaten by morning, and then they don't – or or one gets bit, and then doesn't tell anyone. Okay, real-world logic now. Yeah, by the way, if one of us got bit – Oh, I'm smoking that ass. You're, you're done. Do you at least get a grace period to say goodbye? I might. I'm not going to lie here. Um – Look, if if you want to have a chance to say goodbye and you're in a group with me, don't let me be the one to find out that you're bitten. I'm what okay? I'm saying, like, what if what if you got bitten? <laughs> How would you handle the situation? Oh, also, I would make sure to to like 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 have the bitten person tell everyone that they are bitten before you shoot them. It always looks kind of bad. Well, I mean, like, okay, first and foremost, where am I bitten? What's the circumstances? Wait, can you cut the arm off to stop the bleed? Like, 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 you're on the hand. You're on the hand. You can, can you stop the? Can you? Is there a way to, to like cut off the blood flow, like with a tourniquet, maybe to prevent the blood's infection getting to the blood? It's not. Well, well, from what I understand, yeah, is we're not doing an infection. I think well, is this like? Is, it, is this like snake snake venom, or is this like? No, what? it's not infection. It's back from the. Day. All right. If we're going by if we're going by Max Brooks's rules, then yes, you can try, but it only works like ten percent of the time. Because you have to be really fast, and you know your blood circulates through your body relatively quickly. Is is Max Brooks' zombie uh, return from the dead, or is it an infection? It's an infection. It's an infection. So then, we're, what are we doing? We're we're doing the slow moving. Yeah, but see, that's the, that's the difference. Like the Max Brooks zombies, if a zombie bites a dead body, the dead body just gets eaten. Yeah. In um, George Romero, everyone who dies just reanimates. Unless they have, like, massive brain damage. Or they've been bitten, and they slowly become a zombie. Like, right. Yeah. So if, if you're a normal person and you get bitten by a zombie, you will die and become a zombie. If, For the sake if, of it, I think we should do just use George Romero rules, because that seems to be the classic, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I agree with you that they're the classic, but I think that the... Um, the rules make more sense. Yeah, they do. Yeah, but then those are... Make- those are fast moving zombies. We're fucked. No, they're not. They're not? No. They're slow. What? They're slow. They're they're shambling, you know. Look. Oh, it's been a while. They're not, oh, they're slow, yeah, they're, but they're like semi indestructible because they just keep going. Right. Yeah. And but the thing of it is is that they eventually wear away just because they're deteriorating like, they're rotting flesh. Not just that, but like every time you move your your body, um like you know, your muscles hurt after you work out because, you know, you've torn muscle. Yeah, and they, they, and, they, and they get bigger. Right, but their muscles won't get bigger. They don't heal. That's right. So they're, they're just, yeah, okay. Then we'll use... So it's, just, it's like machinery that's not being repaired. Eventually it's going to wear down and break. Uh, the amount of time that it takes depends on the amount of stress the body puts. Uh, I think they, he says in normal conditions, like temperate, uh, temperate uh, climate, it takes about three to five years for a zombie to deteriorate. Mm. It's it's faster in a very wet, humid climate like a, well, z- a jungle, well, and s- slower in a desert. Yeah. Anyway, so mm-hmm. back to survival. Well, we, we need to. We really need to define which group of zombies are we going to be focusing on because it's different sets of rules. I mean, I think say about it. I zombies. Yeah, because we're, we're talking. You know, if we're talking about how would we react if one of us one of us told each other we were shot. I mean, we were bitten. Uh, it, it depends because George George Romero zombie rules your fuck. Like you're gonna become a zombie. I, I really don't want to talk about George Romero zombie rules. I think they're a little yeah. Sick. I, I think the Max Brooks zombies gives us the most plausible and you know gives us the most plausible scenarios with the most options. Right. So if you were bitten, would you tell anyone? All right. Now the I circumstances. Would tell. Like, it depends on the circumstances about what exactly happened. Now, like, if we're getting, you know, chased by zombies and in the heat of the moment I get bitten and there's an opportunity for us to fall back and for me to, you know, chop off my arm and possibly avoid zombification, 
I would totally tell you guys. Yeah, exactly. But now, like, after the fact, we've been bitten. I've been bitten. It's been, like, a couple of hours. I'm just going to go off in the woods and off myself. Yeah. Yeah, I might get one of you to off me. I, yeah, I can't, I'm not sure I can handle suicide, man. Yeah, I think I might get one of you guys to kill me, but I would tell. I would be like, all right, guys, I'm going to become a zombie. I hope I drop good loot. <laughs> Right. Is that really be your last word? I hope I drop good loot. What else could I say? You know, like I'm, I mean, I'm, you could try and be a little more poetic. I mean, I don't. Well, I mean, I don't really I have, apologize. I really I mean, don't. I really I'm don't sorry. have. I don't really have the time. Bad guy. I'm becoming a zombie. <laughs> well, like, you you've got a couple of hours, and the way that you can tell is like you, you know, you get bit, and then you 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 act you, you got like a fever or something like that. And you start looking at everyone else. They seem mad, mighty tasty. N- well, from what I understand, how how the virus works in Matt Brooks things, it like just completely destroys the frontal lobes of your brain and just, like, turns it to mush. And it, like, reprograms what's left of it. Mm-hmm. So if, if, you know, you got this splitting headache as your brain cells are being turned into jello and you're breaking out in the fever after being a minor bite on your arm, then you're pretty sure that you're fucked. And you should have enough sense about you before, like, you know, you get delirious to know not that your time on this earth is through and you need to get the fuck away from us. And I'm telling you, you're with me, you get sh- you get bit and you don't tell anyone, I'm smoking that ass. All right? I'm Dirty Harry and you're done. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. I see what you mean. All right. So, survival plan. Uh, M- Monkey, you have a very detailed one, actually. Well, I, I mean, really, it's it's all about being prepared. And, you know, the weapons and whatnot are really not going to be as useful to you as getting as far away from civilization as humanly possible. I mean, Max is in the middle of the woods. He, he's, but he's no more than 50, 60 miles away from a major population center. Well, in a, in a given day, I have walked 15, 10, 15, I've walked the entire length of the island of Manhattan in about six hours. Yeah, you so can walk about, pretty far in a day. Right, and, and... Keeping in mind, towards the end of it, I started getting really tired and slowing down. Zombies. These guys don't get tired. You know, all you need is to have one zombie head off in the right direction. And you, you know, run into some idiot who's not prepared, who doesn't know what to do with zombies. He gets bit, and now you've got a secondary outbreak all over the place. And your little safe haven in the middle of nowhere has got 12 or 15 zombies. Well, I mean, you know? 12 or 15 zombies... Knocking on a barricaded door. So- well, the thing about zombies is, like, if you, they're like kind of like the opposite of roaches. You know, like you, you, you get one roach and uh, you know you see more, but they all scatter. With zombies, if you see one, it's going to call more. You know, they start moaning and groaning, and the, the noise that they're making calls any zombie within earshot. And then they make more noise, and then that calls any zombie within them. Think about it like... It's tricky to take them out very fast. Right, but not even. Okay, think about it like this way. I am at, you know, ground zero, all right? Ten, uh-huh. um, uh, half a kilometer away, there's a zombie that hears, hears me, you know, digging in my fortification. He starts moaning, all right? Half a, now, so you can figure they, they can hear about half a kilometer away. Well, another half a kilometer in every direction around him is uh, another zombie. So now it's like four or five zombies. Yeah, it's a radial coming... effect. I understand what you mean. It spreads like a bubble. Right. And then all you need to do is have that, you know, swarming sort of sound thing hit onto a group, of, a large group of zombies. So instead of just like, you know, three kilometers away, there's 40 zombies just sitting around chowing down on some Girl Scouts. They hear this Ooh, one zombie Girl moan. Scouts. And all 40 of them are coming my way. And all this started from one guy half a kilometer away from me. Yeah. Really? If they can't find you, then they can't eat you. Yeah. And we really need to just get outside. It's The problem is when you look at all the nice places to live, they're really huge population centers. So we have to go someplace cold, someplace with not a lot of food, with not really great ground, and we have to... Now, Make a go of it. If you think about it, the best possible place you could ever be, you know, zombie out there would be to all, would be to be already be living in Tibet. Yeah. Now, since we're obviously not all Tibetan monks, what's the best alternative? I say get uh, northern Canada. Oh, but like that's that's a 
that's a con that's a country away from us. If you understand, like we're not well, going to be able to hop through the entire America through Zombie Land and make it out. In a car, it's possible. In a car, all in a I car, it's possible, and that's why you have to be prepared to go. You know, before shit, you know, before the shit really hits the fan. Like extra cans of gas. Like, you know, like, because, I mean, it's not going to happen where all of society degenerates overnight. I mean, what will most likely, uh, most likely scenario I see is that, you know, it's a steady but rapid decline of social services. Like, you know, I say a week before everything kind of shuts down and people are left on their own. Um, I think a week would probably be the worst case scenario. Because, you know, you're going to get su successive waves of um, force. You know, first they're going to send in the cops, and they're going to send in the SWAT team. Then they're going to call out the National Guard. Then they're going to call out the Army. And each one, I think, would be, do a good job of suppressing it for a while. You know what I mean? But not ultimately the infections will reach a critical mass where they won't be able to stop. There'll be so many people yeah. in infected over such a wide area that... You know, there's nothing anybody can do. If we're talking about getting out, um, I, 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 like, I have an experience with getting out of Houston. Uh, when there's a Hurricane Rita coming in um, a couple years ago, uh, my mom and I Hurricane tried to get... Ike. No, 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 Rita. Oh, you're talking about Rita. Rita. I, yeah, I, Rita. Yeah, I didn't leave for Ike. Yeah. Um, when Rita came in, me and my mom tried to leave. We, we, we were successful, but it was hell. It took 14 hours to get just to San Antonio, which is usually, what, a two- or three-hour drive, I think? Max. Yeah. And you couldn't find gas anywhere along the way. So you need to have a lot of gas stuff piled up beforehand if you're trying to get and try to get out. And you need to not be willing, be willing to not take the highways, which is not always the safe truth in a zombie apocalypse. Well, I think that well, I, I, um, I think that's a good idea. I think that not taking the highways is going to be a mixed bag. Well, you know, the because, problem is the highways are going to be really full of congestion. You can't get through. It's, it's right. The, no, I, 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 I'm following you, but here's why I say a mixed bag. It's going to be more difficult to get through. That's a given. But you're less likely to, possibly less likely to run into people. But any sort of, um, any sort of outbreak that's taking place will be more, like, out of control. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not like, you know, the National Guard's going to head out to West Bum Bumblefuck, Kansas, and set up a detour. You know, they're they're going to. They're going to be New York, Chicago, L.A. trying to handle that At shit. At the same time, an outbreak on a major freeway would be horrifying. I mean, imagine a whole bunch of people who get infected out of their cars coming at the people who are still in their cars. Well, that, that's the thing. Max broke zombies. Can they operate car doors from inside a car? But they get, anyone can break glass just by hitting it. Yeah, but a car, they're going to be in a seated position. So breaking glass does not necessarily mean that they can crawl well, out. Yeah, but, what if, what if so, what, but it only takes one to get out. Only one. And then, uh, well, you also have to remember, too, that you're going to be dealing with people that are going to be infected and not realize that they're infected, yeah. not like us, because we're movie smart. And like, oh, I some psycho kicked down my front door and, like, bit me on the arm. Oh, man, I got to get out of here. I'm going to hop in my car with my kids, and we're going to drive. Yeah. And this idiot is going to reanimate, you know, die and reanimate behind the wheel strapped into his car. Yeah, but it's also possible that in a, in a congestion scenario, people get out of their cars all the time. And it would only yeah. take one person to reanimate outside of their car for a whole for just to just to sweep down the freeway. People zombies breaking into cars through the window, which is entirely possible, in my opinion. Yep, that I think that's a very likely. I think you know what? Probably both scenarios would be taking place at the same time. Exactly, and it would be very very bad for anyone caught on the freeway. Okay, well, this being said, will this even be an issue for us? Because we are genre savvy, and what I've noticed is that people tend to think they can handle things like this, like. When Hurricane Ike came, a bunch of Galveston people just stayed in Galveston. The and they got time. fucked. Yeah. So we could, we're we genre savvy. So the second we realize that this this seems a lot like a zombie apocalypse, you know, we're leaving. It's not going to be the four days before, you know, Katrina hits. It's not going to be the four days before Rita hits. It's going to be a couple of weeks, maybe a month before Class 3 or Class 4 outbreak. I would hope that we would leave a month before, but I don't know if that would happen. I mean... Consider that in the event of a of, of an out, of any sort of outbreak, the government's going to suppress the media. So, we, right, but we but we would know what we would be. You know, we have an idea about what to look for. You know, it's like, yeah. hey, why is it just this this you know sudden rash of uh, psychos biting people in the news? You know, you know, because, and and I think one of the problems would be 
is even though uh, Orn and I and Max and yourself are all genre savvy, our families aren't. Yeah, and you know, like people we care about, because they have families also, and I, I think there's only maybe one other person besides Orin who would want to get out of here with. And I don't know how I would convince her mother or her grandmother. You know what I mean? I know how I'd right. Waco. Fuck. I'd just go. Well, I mean, the truth of the matter is, in an ideal situation, we would already have um, purchased some property uh, up north, uh, above the frost line. You know the. Uh, you know where. Because you know they freeze in the winter, the the they Max, freeze the water, yeah. and for whatever reason they can survive being frozen and thawed out again. So wherever it's cold longest is the best place to be. But remember, we already, there's a lot of problems still associated with being up there. You know, survival. Well, yeah, most, like you know, yeah, you get rid of the zombie problem, but now you have to deal with winter. Yeah, then you have to deal with the human element because humans. People are gonna have the same idea. Yeah. It's just that they might not have a plan as well as we do. And people have a bad habit of going after whoever has the best plan. You know, so if someone has a lot of food, people know he has a lot of food. They can go after him and get the food. Well, I mean, remember, we're going for some place that's away from population centers. But so will everyone else be. But well, not everyone else. else? I mean, you got to remember, Canada is big. And, like, something like 80% of the Canadian population lives within 100 miles of the U.S. border. It is true. And also, That's we because also, the rest of Canada is inhospitable. Also, the rest of us we have would have we have we have a specific a specific location to be going to, whereas everyone else is like headless chicken. They'll be like, we right, I'm <laughs> looking for a place, but all four of us have a, a one location. Like, we're this is our goal, you know? Yeah, no, no, no. Do you think GPS would work for it? I think GPS would still work. Yeah, no satellite. I think satellite things wouldn't be effective at all. But if, we, if no, I they would still work because it's not like you know. Um, you know, zombies start eating people on Earth, and the satellites just fall out of the sky. Yeah, but what about power plants? I, I, I know that they're semi, you know, auto-maintained, but they still require regular human interaction, right? Yes, I think that they would have. Um, at towards the end, when they start to abandon the cities and the areas, the power plants would be hopefully shut down. But you know, the last people would, you know, turn off the lights on the way out. Because I mean, leaving an uh, like an operational nuclear power plant with not even just, nuclear, just like you know, coal based even. Well, uh, we don't have any coal. I worry more about the nuclear. Yeah, we do. It's not coal based power. Because like a coal plant is just going to eventually shut down when it stops getting new well, coal. That's my question: is that it would get eventually shut down, right? Yeah, everything Water, would eventually water, shut down. The, the largest power suppliers of Houston. I'm not sure about New York. They're not. They run on like generators near you know water supplies you know they're, they're very they're very they run 24 7 you know like so that must there can't possibly be a human element so they have to be semi well there there is a human element in the maintenance of it yeah so they would still i, I would think that they would still and for a little there's all there's also the element like you know sometimes things start running hot and they need to be shut down you know demand peaks and whatnot I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with things that need to be turned off and turned on by people. Now, so what would happen was most likely is it would it would eventually fail dramatically, but even if unless they shut it off, so you could probably count on power for a decent amount of time, but unpredictably because one day it'll just be gone. Yeah, a couple of months. Does that make sense to you, Max? Mm. Yeah. He speaks. Yeah, Max is really <laughs> quiet on this. He's eating. You know some young guy? Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I'm a slightly related topic. Um, now, what do you think goes into the ideal zombie survival hideout? Like, in this, pla in this remote place in Canada? Like, power seems to be a very big issue. You know, generators run on fuel, which is limited. I say. Well, first of, um, go ahead, um, Brent. I I would think that, like, thinking about it, I would want to make it soundproof from the inside, so as to not draw attention to other well, zombies. Okay, that's that's good. But I'm talking about basic human living conditions, like electricity, food, water. Well, How do you maintain those? Things? Well, a well, but for water, but who, I mean, electricity is gone, is out of the question. That's not basic human, in, in, in a crisis, 
Electricity is no longer a basic human Okay, necessity. what about fuel then? We still need fuel for candles and fire and all we don't, that. We don't need fuel for candles. It is a match. We're not even out of I mean, uh, Orrin, I, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but human society did exist for several thousand years before Edison invented the light bulb. Yeah, I'm the aware. Bulb, or, the, or the matchstick, for that matter. Like, we can fire... Starting fire doesn't... Assuming our, 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 that our current level of survival skills would be what we would be working with here. I don't think any of us could really start a fire without taking a few hours. Yeah, but, we, but we're going well, to be in a building. Orrin, speak for yourself. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you were a Boy Scout. I, I was. I okay. think we should. We would have a building with soundproofing, and maybe like a a very thermal. You know what I mean? Like a very thermally insula insulated. Yeah, yeah, very insulated. You know, because they have the technology. You know, we have for buildings now. Is they can they you can make a pretty. What would our budget be like? Height considerably. Like, like like in in this. Situation. Well, I mean, now you're trying to put a price tag on our lives. Leave it to the Jew. <laughs> also, soundproofing is about available resources. Soundproofing yeah. isn't expensive. It's like egg cartons. Like, 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 He's right. Yeah, I was just watching. The thermal watch insulation is a bit more expensive. Well, what? No, well, actually, um, it's, uh, it's like, like a, if you use, uh, they have this company that does um, installation that's uh, re like bio. It's um, cellulose, cellulose insulation. That's just like regular heating insulation type stuff. And it is, uh, it's, it actually does good for uh, sound dampening as well as uh, fireproofing. Hmm. Believe it or not. Really? Yeah. I mean, these are the type of things that we'd have to look into to to building our main domicile. You know, we would definitely need to, you know, have a garden, be able to plant things, you, to take advantage of the warm months to to build up our um, supplies of foods. And do we focus mainly on vegetables, or do we bring any animals? I mean, that's so unlikely to be... You know, how would you bring animals? What, well, I mean, I think certain animals that we definitely should bring, like chickens. Chickens, yes. But how do we bring yeah, chickens? They, how do we bring chickens? There were chickens well, inside the building. Like, How do we bring chickens to the building? We put them in well, you park. get a cage, <laughs> and you put the chicken in the cage. And you put the chicken in the, the cage Keeping in the car. A, I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I could keep a chicken fed and all that such through uh, all the crap it would take to get to this place. Okay, well, chicken, you, you, yeah. chicken, chickens eat, like, grass and shit, you know? like I mean, it's, it's No, like, chickens eat yeah. feed. Well, Dude, like chickens crazy. existed before feed, so I mean, I'm gonna. I mean, they can eat grass, yes. I'm gonna go out on the limb be, here and say the chickens could. I also mean, I, do, I mean, what we would do obviously is we can't store live animals and expect them to be alive when we get back because we don't. <laughs> well, get, guys, get, I think we forget to feed the chickens. Right, but what you can do is you can stockpile feed. Yeah. You know, we could stockpile maybe like six, seven months worth of feed for X amount of animals. <laughs> And God forbid we can't find animals. We have feet. Huh. I, I don't think you can eat it. But we, not, um, yeah, we could we could try to make sure it would be feet that could conceivably be eaten by humans. Yeah, like like edible feet. For us. Right. Okay. This is a backup, you know, like just in case. Right. Just in worst case scenario. You get the feet. But I mean, we we do that. We stockpile the feed. We. You know, this is among the things that would need to be in our our area that before we get there. You know, there need to be, you know, tools. There would need to be, um, you know, books on survival, you know, in in the environment. You know what I mean? Like how to how to be a farmer in the, the northwest, you know, whatever. You know, we would need an emergency generator because we need like know, a couple emergency generators. I think no, we would, probably yes, but I mean, really, we're, we're only using it for like. Um, checking the radio or something crazy like that, or we have some. That we have, there are hand crank radios. No, I, but they they have limited range. That's so we we would need to build a radio tower, actually. Well, hopefully, Not, yeah. But you're that right. would draw. But that, wouldn't that draw the human element? Like I don't want to have to deal with any other survivors besides my group of survivors. Well, what if the army is like, is trying to locate people and tell everyone it's all over? How do we know? Well, that, we need, they we need would, a way to stay in would, contact. They would be doing that through the radio. Like their radio tower. Oh, well, that's true. The radio tower doesn't have to be that high. It, could, it doesn't have to be. It can be pretty inconspicuous as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're not talking about you know some you know broadcasting. We can even do a satellite uh, feed set up possibly. Right. We would. You know, we would need 
because ideally, you know, optimistically, we would hope that this would not be the uh, we would not become the last bastion of humanity. Yeah, we want we just want to be a place to, to keep us safe for a while, but we, we it can't be that long term. I would say that, that it would be like good probably for a couple of years at the most. We would have to, we would want to be self sufficient and able to you know keep ourselves safe indefinitely, but hope that that is not the case. True. Yeah. Also, I think another thing that's important is that I mean we're going to be have to even when we get to the place we'll have to be moving like you know they go do things like you know farm or whatever clothing you know what what do what do we wear I think that well, it's I not talk. just what you wear actually you know I found this out it's how you wear it because like. You know, if you've got like all this heavy wool and whatnot, and you're you're um, digging a ditch and it's 20, 20 below zero, and you're breaking out in the sweat, and you just don't take off your clothes and they get all wet with with sweat, you're gonna die of hypothermia when you put your clothes back on because it's sure. gonna suck all the heat out of your body. Well, I'm talking about like zombie prevention mostly. Well, actually, I have a I, uh, clothing is I have an, I have an interesting problem. What do we do? <laughs> now, l- listen. Um, we're out in the middle of nowhere. We are away from every sort of civilization. We're just a couple of guys for years on end, probably. How do we keep ourselves entertained? How do we avoid going crazy? Well, working. Well, because somebody has. Well, working, and someone better bring a deck of cards. I mean, really. We need like a whole library or something, or books. We, we would definitely. Books. I mean, this would be beforehand we would stock we'd have to stock it with of course all of our technical information that we need but we we also have you know entertainment needs i mean there's only so many hours in the day and you know we're still going to need there's only so much work you can do in a day rather yeah. so we're going to need you know monopoly and parcheesi and, and cars really you know. we have to deal with the possibility that eventually we will get very tired of each other we're gonna get very tired of each other in the first week. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's you know, after we kill and eat Orn, um, I think a lot of our problems <laughs> will disappear. I, well, okay, hold on. We're now that we're, now that we're talking about a hypothetical situation. Oh, we're not talking about cannibalism. We're not. No, I'm not, not talking about that. I'm talking about the four of us. Who are we bringing? Do we have limits on who we can bring? Well, I think it, it really just. The limits on who we can bring, I think, are going to be determined by the, the size of the area that we are, are choosing to set ourselves up in. And that's something that we need to discuss. Is like, how big of a party do we want? I think really something around the 20 to 30 people should really be where we, we're, we're capping that's out at. Sounds good. That, that's, us, that's us and all our family. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, no, not all of my family. My family would be like a hundred something. Well, I'm just taking my mom. I'm assuming my, I'm assuming my dad's gonna be in Ohio somewhere. So I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm the way. Does your mother have any skills? She's a psychologist. She's a psychologist. She could keep us from going insane. She's a sex therapist. Yeah, that. But there's still some basic. She's also very, very street smart and very, very, very. Different. I wouldn't say street smart. No, I would not. I would definitely not say street smart. I would you say would. intelligent. Very, very, very intelligent. You'd be surprised. She has a lot of common sense. Common sense and street smart are not the same thing at all. Not at all. Yeah. No. no. Not at all. So I, I think I wouldn't bring my dad. I'd bring. Uh, well, let's put your dad's an asshole. Yeah. No, I think I. I don't think. I don't think I'd have qualms about leaving most of my family. I think I'd only be worried about Alex. What about your dog? And what, and my dog. What about dogs? That's an interesting question. Well, dogs are would be very useful because in the Max Brooks zombies, we can um, train them to smell zombies. Yes, like if someone's been infected, dogs immediately react horribly to them. Like they can smell the infection even before they're they're showing symptoms. Yeah. So and plus, my dog just likes to bark at people anyway, so it's good. I'll bring my dog. I think we we would definitely need to establish some sort of perimeter that would allow us to be able to defend against. Um, God forbid, I mean, you know, all we need to have is some, like, tour bus break down outside of, like, you know, t- 10 miles away from where we thought we were in the middle of nowhere, and 40 zombies start banging on our door, you I know? Think we're, actually, I'd say worse, 40 tourists start banging on our door. Oh, I think I think that the roof of our building should be something we can get to, you know? Like, from the inside of it, and then we could just hold off from there, like, shoot down into... I, I think we should establish a hard perimeter. I mean, I know that makes it more difficult to maintain, 
you know, a fence or whatnot. I'm sorry, I'm not really familiar with military jargon. What do you it's mean by like that? It's like a fence. It's something that keeps them several – a certain. it's a physical of... barrier. Yeah. You think a minefield is a good idea? No, we don't have we no. don't have that kind of technology. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, uh, we can make my but I mean, think about it. These things are not smart. I mean, if if you put up a sign that says minefield, do not enter, your entire body will be blown to bits. They will just walk right into it. Yeah, but the only pe- the only people that would be hurt by hiding a booby trap like that would be us. Would be humans. Yeah, but like, well, I don't want to. I don't want to accidentally forget where we put the minefield, and then exactly, oh. you don't have to hide. It. My point is, you don't need something that's hidden. That's all. Oh, it's it could be like a bright orange mine. Yeah, you can say, "Hey, mine here, guys! Don't step no. on it." Why do you need a mine when, if you put a fucking pit in the ground, they will walk into it? We could just make a moat then, like not a moat, but just a big circular pit. Yeah, you could just make a big pit, and if they see you on one side, they'll just keep walking towards you and pay no attention to anything that's in between you. Okay, what, what, what if, we, what what if I, God forbid, we're in a situation where there are enough zombies that they can fill up I the pit? I was just going to ask <laughs> And then walk over <laughs> each other. Well, I mean, the good thing about that is, I mean, it's not going to happen, like, instantaneously. You mean, just burn the zombies. We can, we can set fire to the pit. You could burn the zombies. That is true. They will burn. But wouldn't that draw attention to other zombies? You know, well, I mean, obviously, but I mean, dude, if we're, we're worried about the the pit overflowing with zombies, I think we've we've got enough problems already. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's you know, the shit is hitting the fan. I don't know how much yeah, worse it can uh, get. Uh, so then we should should we we should we keep a certain amount of fuel or something just for burning zombies in the worst no, case scenario? No, hell no. Okay. That sounds like a- I, I I don't see anything's wrong with having a munitions locker that's you know preparing for the worst case yeah, scenario. It's not fuel for burning zombies. Like we should have. Okay, then the roof. I still think that the roof of the of the building should be something we can get to from the inside. That's not- it, it. It needs to be. Yeah, it needs to be. Now, do we, do we, I've seen some plans that involve underground structures, and it seems very impractical. Yeah, because if they start swarming the only entrance, then there is no exit. Yeah. At least from right. from the roof of our one-story building, I can maybe hop down if God forbid oh, God. I need to. It, we weren't on one-story roof. That means they can climb up. No, they couldn't. Eight, one story is like eight feet, maybe, ten feet. No, it's more than, yeah. Like that, this ten is feet. I would, no, well, I think two stories is probably a single story. I think they, they need to be two stories. They need to be built with stairs that are easily collapsible. And really, ideally, if we put the, the houses up on stilts, then it's a non-issue. Yeah. You, know, you just pull up the ladder and wait them out. Yeah, actually, that's true. And this would be after we vote our, our, you know, our, our fence and moat or pit <laughs> thing has already been overrun. And, and in that in that situation, we should probably just be sticking it to the Although, consider building. how big this has to be for about 20 to 30 people. But it's just the, the building is going to be the large. The building, yes, yeah, the building. I mean, really, a bungalow where we're, where, where, you know, we don't necessarily have to hot bunk it. You know where, you know what hot bunking is, right? No. That's where, um like, three people sleep in one bed, but not at the same time. Ah, okay. Like, you know... There's eight hours a day. There's eight hour shifts. The bed is always full. Mm-hmm. You know, one guy gets out, one guy gets in. That sounds very efficient. So. Yeah, but it's also like, it's oh. they do it in the military, but it, it's it's a tough way to live. It's, you know. But we are in a zombie apocalypse. Right, but you don't want to add stresses to an already stressful situation. Exactly. That's when that's when you start cracking. Right. So I mean, anything you can do to sort of eliminate the stress as you do that. I mean, obviously, if we start taking on survivors and our camp is swelling, we're not we taking have to... on survivors. I don't know. Oh. I don't think. I don't. I don't I'm not think turning I could. away someone who has legitimate viable skills. I think that we have to have protocols then, like they like a strip search with the, with the same gender to make sure they're not bitten. Exactly. That, that's what I'm well, saying. that and with the dogs and everything, you know, and a quarantine and yada yada yada. But we're putting the cart ahead. From, now, uh, the cart ahead children, of the horse. Will we take in children? Of course, they taste so delicious. I think, okay, okay, cannibalism I think, jokes I think, aside. I think, I think we take in children, but we have to keep the same rules. Like, if they're infected, we're not taking No, 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 but what... what yeah, because, uh, you know, a three-foot-tall zombie can kill you just as easy as a six-foot-tall one. What can a child do for us? They can grow up and keep the species continuing. Like, um, long- <laughs> yeah, I mean... We're hoping that we're not the last bastion of humanity here, right? We're also hoping that... I mean, it's true, but... Look, you plan for you, you hope and for the best and plan for the worst. Yeah. Fair enough. 
you know, I, I don't think we should be turning people away. And I think we should definitely, you know, if someone's been infected, we would just have to kill them. But, you know, if they're not infected, we they're... Can give them options. You know, like, like, we can tell them, yeah, listen, you're, good, you're infected. We can explain to them the situation, what's going to happen to them. And we can also provide them the service of ending their life. Okay, they're going to panic if we do that. Uh, we can provide them the service of ending their life for a nominal fee. <laughs> of their of all their stuff because nice. <laughs> they're going to be dead anyway so this this would be end of life counseling yeah look yeah. you're going to die and you don't want my psychologist to number with you <laughs> uh, it's either going to be slow and painful and you might possibly kill some people that you really like after the fact or we can just take care of it right now we have several yeah. packages if you'd like to look at these um, here's our brochure. Yeah, we have, just give us a call. We have the gunshot to the head. We have the hammer. Well, we have the, the hammer. We don't recommend. It's we don't recommend the. Yeah, the hammer is, is usually it takes a couple times and it's a little painful. Uh, yeah. We have the we have the pistol option. We have the little shotgun, which is really popular nowadays. Mm. If you're into something kind of like really you know kitschy, you know we have you can throw your your head onto a running chainsaw. We have a little box that you just, you know, lay down and lean forward and it just takes care of everything. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a little messy, though. Yeah. I will warn you. I will warn you. you. You will be seeing your own blood for like half a second before you die. Yeah. And it, it really doesn't sound all that great. I mean, you know, we are running low on oil, so that thing is rusty as all hell. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, it, does make this, it does make this wonderful <laughs> sound right before it goes into you, though. Yeah. It's, it's I, I always love it. I love watching, but I got to say, I don't I'd like to do it. Oh, hold on. Got a call. Oh, what do we... <laughs> so, Max. I'm digging your ring. Yo. So, what? Who, who would you bring in a Zompocalypse? Would I bring? Yeah. Hmm. Now this is like immediate people and contacts, not like. Excuse me a moment. Within the same, uh, not immediate, like because you're gonna be having to travel the same way we're traveling, so it can be on the way or like whatever you want. But there's a limit to the number of people you can bring. Just who would you bring? Not, hmm. not including the four of us because we're all bring, we're all automatic. We're all gonna come. Yeah. Let's see, if it's a zombie apocalypse, maximum survivorship, I might have to say that I'd just go with by myself. I wouldn't bring any other people. No one. Really, Max? Well, I mean, if I'm already with you guys, I wouldn't want to bring extra baggage. No, no, because we're, cause we're all traveling from our individual starting point. See, so, I mean, the idea is that we are going to put together a list of things that we need to make this, you know, zombie fortification to give us all the greatest probability of surviving. You know, we will have all of the supplies that we think that we will need. We will have, you know, all the knowledge that we think we're going to need either in our heads or available to us that we've already stored there. And we'll have the benefit of mutual defense, you know, because, Max, you have to sleep eventually. Wouldn't it be great to have somebody watching your back? Yeah, well, because because there is the idea that you're going to have to travel from Pennsylvania to our undisclosed location in Canada. Hmm. I don't know, though. Still, it's like, if it's just me, then I could, like, hide out really well, though. But, Max, you, you will have to sleep eventually, and who's going to watch you while you're sleeping? I'm, I'd, I'd find a corner. I'm... <laughs> If they're they're like these slow. There's like these. They're just zombies. They don't have high intellect. I'd cover my tracks, be really careful about that stuff, and I'd hide in a corner somewhere. What? Yeah, but you know, you bees know, you... don't have high intellect yet. They still manage to kill people. Yeah, you never want to risk waking up to a zombie. Like, yeah, what if you like you're in your corner and you wake up and there's like six zombies, three on each side of you. And now what? Maybe 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 you wake up and there are like a, like like twenty zombies and maybe. they don't notice you. But what are you gonna do? Maybe you never wake up because they blame you while you're asleep. Yeah. Then you just well then there wouldn't be a problem. It just never wakes up. No, I'm just I'm I'm just in a terrible situation. Though. Also, if we see a max zombie before max makes it, I think <laughs> we, should, we should do rock paper scissors for who gets the headshot. And it has to be a headshot with a snipe rifle on the run. Yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah, you're gonna and, have to, we're gonna have to run side to side. Points like, for no scope. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because it's Max, and that's how he's got to go out. Yeah. Yeah. You, if anything, if anything, you should do it while riding a flaming motorcycle doing a backflip. That, that sounds a little unrealistic. I think that sounds kind of impossible. <laughs> I think that sounds kind I think, of deserving. I think Max just wants to hold on to any sort of life he can get, you know, yeah. undead or otherwise. Because we're going to we're going to miss, and we'll probably get die in the accident. So. <laughs> Yeah. I think Max wants to kill us. I think I think it has to be you have to get him you have to take him down with a knife. <laughs> you have to go imano imano. Imano imano. What what am I stab him underneath his jaw no, into no, the no. blades while into his brain? While beat it by Michael Jackson is playing. Yeah, while beat it by Michael Jackson is playing. <laughs> you guys tough. Tough. I know. Max ain't that good. Maybe maybe that what? and you have weights tied to your feet. Dude, I, I am not going you. Yeah. I'm not taking on a zombie with a K-bar just to prove a point. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, take down Max with a, with a choke wire. <laughs> what, what, take his whole head off? I mean, yeah. what the hell? No, like, no, no, what we do is, we, 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 two of us, one of us holding one end, the other one holding the end, we run straight at him. Yeah, I mean, I like, him. And then the thing was, I mean, yeah, that might work if one of us was the Flash, okay? But I don't think we're going to get up fast know, enough we do to be it, able to take someone's it, head off. We do it with two cars or two motors. I can't if, if we're in cars, why don't we just run him over? Why is Max Zombie... Because you know what we're doing. Guys, hold on, hold on. Why is Max Zombie staying still for this whole shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for all, this whole setup, like he's just going to go... <laughs> wait. Me got work in morning. Hurry up. <laughs> you know what? Oh, Max Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Max won't bring anyone. I don't know, Max. I think you should bring someone. Who would you bring, Max? Really? Not your sister, because... Uh, Is she hot? Yeah, really? I was just going to ask that, actually. Is she hot? Because, you know, we really need to make the species more attractive while we're there. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying. And since we're the leaders, I think we should have pick of which women are the breeders. You yeah. Know? You fat chick, no, no sex. <laughs> you don't get to reproduce. I mean, unless she was like really smart, so Orin's mom might, you know. My mom was like were. past menopause. Oh well, what 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 are we keeping her for? <laughs> uh, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> you should have kept that under your hat, buddy. I think I, you know, I'm keeping, I'm taking my girlfriend, but you guys don't get, you don't get access. It's mine. How about that? Good, good. As long as you have children. That's All right, I can do okay. that. Yeah. Or maybe I shouldn't be having children. Is the important thing. <laughs> we want to make the species better, not, not worse. Yeah. yeah. Warren, you're like banned, dude. Sorry, it's the yelling. Sorry. You can have. I'm actually pretty smart. I mean. It's the yelling. I, I, yeah, it's that's, the yelling. That's, that's, that's not genetic. That's especially a problem when you when we're like trying to avoid zombies. Like that's a learned behavior. Yeah. Yes, and you would be the one teaching it to the child. Can we soundproof your mouth, like when we go on hunting missions and things like that? I'm okay with duct tape. All right. Uh, but that's not good too, because what if he's like, zombie, zombie, zombie. <laughs> 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 you guys can't understand me when I'm saying zombie. And you're stupid. I know, like if he's saying zombie behind you, I'm gonna be like, maybe he's, <laughs> if he's saying something, it's probably a zombie behind me. So yeah. I'm going to... I mean, like, 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 honestly, Brett and I, like, we, we have, we think a lot of such similar lines, but, you know, we could probably understand each other. Yeah, we should also, if we, if we go on like expedition for any other reason, like, I don't know, like, we have to go out. We should move as a group, and then if we break up, break up into two men cells. Yeah, always two men cells. Three men cells if possible, but two men. Well, there's four of us, so... Okay, well, you know what? I'm a, I thought we were bringing more people. Well, yeah, bringing more people, but four of us would be the expedition group. Yeah, okay. I think, like, at least initially, we should really think about hunting, um, going hunting, you know, living off the, the food available in the land, because we're going to need the, we're in the protein. We're Canada. Hunting is not as good as you think. It's moose. I don't care. Moose. It's beef. It's harder to hunt moose than you think. I mean, yes, I, but I want to we, see I want to see Moose outrun Bullet, and then I, <laughs> that like that all of a sudden. Moose, you got a point. I mean, you know, yes, it's it's not something that we could just fall into and just learn it overnight. Over, we can work at it. Yeah, but monkey. Oh God. 
and also give us the, the benefit of knowing what's going on around us. Yeah. Okay, you're here. But going back to apparel, like turtlenecks, long sleeves, long underwear, oh. guys, long underwear. Yeah. I mean, of course we, I mean, really, I mean, I would say we get the Under Armour, the, the you know, the best high tech stuff and low tech stuff that we can get, you know, just stock up on it. Like you know? leather, like, call, like, you know, leather collars under our turtlenecks, you know, just things like, things like that. Like, I mean, that's kind of German, but you know, but it, yeah, yeah, leather, it'll keep you from being bitten. Yeah. But leather prevents bite. You know, I'm just saying a little bit. Of I don't that. care if you look like a hot topic, Egypt, if you're not getting bitten. Well, that's why I'm putting my leather armor under my, my leather pieces under my clothing. So I don't look like a hot topic. Reject. Yeah. Okay. Actually, that'd be horrifying for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, we, we yeah. should definitely think about, you know, what sort of, you know, battle gear we would have and what's our, you know, standard, you know, militia gear for def- the common defense. Well, I think guns are important. Well, yeah, we're all going to have guns. Ma- Sorry, Max, were you saying something? What? You weren't just saying anything, Max? No, I was just saying that if you want to be a real man, you could just roll around wearing absolutely nothing. <laughs> I'm really having to... De- the debate this allowing Max into can we have a like a little sub compound where Max gets to be <laughs> naked and uh, alone we'll just throw some food in there every now and again just to keep him happy I think Max should be the I think Max should be the the the, the, the defense you know like first <laughs> first alert <laughs> yeah, we, we could have Max like you know just outside the perimeter it's like a watchdog you know he gets to be alone. We get to watch his back, and if he doesn't show up, we know something horrible has happened, and we should lock the base down. That's depressing. It that's sounds Max, effective. That's what Max wants. <laughs> Everybody wins. Except Max. Right. But except Max kind of loses, but yeah. But that's it's what he a, wants. But he, he want, That's because he wants to lose doesn't mean he's winning. Look, if he wants to, to allow us to exploit him as our fucking guard dog, then, I mean, who are we to say no? That's that's true. You know? Uh, like, where Max, were we before Max started talking? Clothing, apparel. We're talking about clothing. Like, what would we wear, you know, as a... I, I think, you know, obviously... Oh, we're we talking have... about standard loadouts for, um, what would we take with us, like, what, like, gear-wise... Yeah, gear. Well, I mean, of course, you have your cold weather gear. You know, we have some stuff for the for the warmer summer months. All three of them. Mm-hmm. I think that the the good thing about cold weather gear is it tends to work like both. You know, the stuff that we're going to be using to prevent biting is also going to be stuff that's going to keep us somewhat warm. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, like you know, Kevlar stuff and things like that. Kevlar gloves, pants, vest. Kevlar, yeah, sure. Kevlar pants would be a little bit hard to move in. They no, they 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 have them. Cops like, use them. Oh, like thinner, thinner. Yeah, it's not like it's not bulletproof. It's that. It's more like it's slash resistant. Ah, that's good then. That that that'd be a good. Yeah. Um, I would say in terms of like gear to take with you, like weapons. Um, one melee weapon at least. Like a combat knife. I'd say. Well, you know, if, not, if, no knife doesn't knife. You don't want knife. You want blunt objects. Oh, it's no. Actually, he's wrong. Hold on one second, guys. Like a Tommy bat. Yeah, I was thinking of that. Hold on, I gotta get my zombie survival. Ah <laughs> uh, yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Max just chimes in with the. Yeah. Mm, yes, quite. <laughs> You bloody punks. I mean, the entire British audience. Max is just going to be uh, going around with... We have no audience. Ma- Max is going to be going around with brass knuckles and no clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got he's got the zombies down. Maybe a barrette. Right. A barrette. barrette. I, think, I think I would rock a barrette. That's a good idea. It's a bar- fucking... Ah! We just talked about that. God forbid monkey heard that, because then I give you shit when it gets back. It's beret. Yes, thank you. My beret. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, barrettes are those things that, like, five-year-old girls have in their hair. That's what Max wants. Oh. Oh. Exactly. I'll have my beret upon my barrettes. You? I, w- I wouldn't mind a beretta. 
was a nice handgun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, very okay, I mean, the book really breaks itself down into different sections. Like, for example, if you're on the attack or on the defense, it has different equipment lists. Yeah. But, like, for uh, going on the attack, primary firearm, rifle or subatomic carbine, 50 rounds of ammunition, cleaning kit, secondary weapon, preferably a pistol, 25 rounds of ammunition, hand-to-hand -hand weapon, large or small, a knife, a flashlight, two emergency flares, signaling mirror, two-way radio, two ways of making fire, matches, lighter, etc., full court canteen, daily ration, personal med kits, hiking or combat boots, two pairs of socks, and a bedroll or pad. Each group, 10 people or fewer, should have two silent weapons, three explosive devices, two grappling hooks, 500 pe pieces of rope, two pairs of binoculars, two crowbars, two bolt cutters, a toolkit, must include a claw hammer, ball peen hammer, four ounce uh, diagonal, four inch pliers with spring, four inch long nose pliers with cutter, Phillips screwdriver, three to four inch and stubby, slot screwdriver, four and five inches, jeweler screwdriver set, 12 and one half inch hacksaw, 3 millimeter, 3 m electrical tape, adjustable wrench, hand drill with two five millimeter bit set, hand axe or hatchet. Hold on, hold kit. on, hold on, hold on. Are we reading defense or attack still? This is attack. I gotta find defense. Give me a minute. Repeat I'll that. read you defense. Yeah, this that seems like something more more uh, in tune with what we're doing. All right, hold on. That that sounds like a lot of stuff. I'm thinking maybe. But that's for a group. Not everyone, every person carries it. Yeah, but we're we're gonna be we're gonna be going out. Once every, you know, and then we we have all that stuff back at home. Oh, Bradshaw, you son of a bitch, just tearing them up. He's talking about football for our listeners. You guys really need to get your hands on this map. I mean, on this book, it's going to save our lives. <laughs> My cover's fallen off. I've I've read it so much. Uh, let's see. 65 on the defense. Max is pretty much just going with, with brass knuckles. What I brass knuckle. He's going to wear a condom and just cock slap all the zombies to death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God. He's going to do it. You know, that means he's going to do it, right? Like, if this happens, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to see. I'm going to, go ahead. I'm going to horribly, horribly do everything that is not advised for his optimal survival survival in the zombie apocalypse yeah. and i will succeed yeah he's, he's gonna be we're, gonna, we're all gonna be there at the thing waiting for him to get there and he's gonna he's gonna actually roll up with like a uh, ribbons in his beard and his hair for every zombie he's killed and he's gonna have hundreds and he's just gonna be naked <laughs> <laughs> and he's like give me your women <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna say okay because dude if he's killed that many zombies naked <laughs> He's, it's gonna be him and Chuck Norris, and that's it. <laughs> Last man on earth. Oh. I come bearing pizza and monster for you. Thank you. Not for me, but I want some. I know. All right, here's what we need for <laughs> on the defense. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. All right, this is what um, weapons. You need a rifle, 500 rounds, shotgun, 12 gauge, 250 shells. This, pistol, sounds, 40... this sounds like stationary. <laughs> huh? This sounds like stationary. Yeah, you, you're on the defense, so this is what you need. Like, you need the shotgun in case they break in, you can take off their heads because they work great at short range, yeah. i.e. zombies coming in through the front door. God forbid the zombies, the zombies can climb up the ladder, though, because we're on stilts. Well, you, this is what he recommends. Listen, pistol, forty-five caliber, 250 rounds, uh, silencer rifle, silencer pistol, because... You know, you don't want to give away your position to the zombies. Uh -huh. Heavy crossbow in lieu of, of silencers, 150 bolts. Tele telescopic sight rifle, night vision scope rifle, laser sight rifle, laser sight pistol. Katana sword uh, or other short bladed sword. Two knives with smooth edges, six to eight inch blades, and a hand hatchet. And this is for each individual. Is that katana really practical? It, it is probably one of the best hand-to-hand -hand weapons you can get for fighting zombies. I mean, it's essentially a, a, a three-foot-long razor blade that you could use to decapitate a zombie like that with very little training. When I mean, you think about it, and, and we're talking a real katana, not, you know, those piece-of-crap show ones that you see. No, like, it's, at all. it's something by, like, Bushido Musashi. That's a good brand. Yeah, like a really... One that's intended to be used They're to kill called people. Full tang and battle ready, in other words. Exactly. Yeah. 
exact not like some stage prop thing or whatever. No, real real sword. Because think about it, even though decapitating a zombie won't necessarily kill it, the head will still function. That's all it is, is a head. <laughs> yeah, you know, but long- the, head, the head can't possibly roll at me, so as long as I'm not, like, you know, stupid and put my toe in its mouth. Exactly. You, you basically neutralized it as a, as a viable threat. Mm-hmm. You could just sweep it out the front door, you know? Or we could play soccer with it. Ha! That's a bad idea. That would not be bright, no. But we have all you need to... Still a bad idea. Like, I, I wouldn't... I mean, that's like, hey, let's juggle these live hand grenades. I mean, you could do it. I think we should do that. Or Max can do it. We can watch from very, very far away. <laughs> I think that would be cool. Like, hey, what's that big red splash in the sky over there by where Max lives? Oh. Or lived. Oh. Oh, right. The, mm-hmm. the grenade show was today. <laughs> we missed it. I had tickets. <laughs> so did he. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not funny. So, communication. When we go out, radio? Not, but I think we should have constant communication. Like we wouldn't have to press the talk. So, maybe headsets connected to radios. Well, you can also get throat mics, you know. What are those? They, it's a... a oh, it's nice. a yeah, I got it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a mic that um, it rests up against your throat, and when you start to talk, it activates. Yeah. Those are those are available commercially. Expensive though. Huh? Hmm. How expensive? Probably, yeah. Not prohibitively so. We could I mean, I mean, for you, since like you've never had a job in your entire life, yes, but. For those of us that are employable, we can purchase these at some point. It would be something that we would be able to put on our list and reasonably expect to get. Okay. You know, like um, the silencers for my uh, military-grade sniper rifle. Maybe probably not. <laughs> not, not so fucking likely. Okay. Yeah, but you know, I... those are one of the things that, and God fucking bless rednecks in Texas and in the southern states, they have made. Handmade silencers that work pretty fucking well. Yeah, where where I live, just even owning a silencer is a felony. Well, so. well, where I live, not owning a silencer is like a bad idea. It's very shameful. Like people look upon you and they go, "Who's your silencer?" Oh, I don't have one. God. Yeah. I, I um, this conversation is over. <laughs> I don't know you. We never spoke. If anyone, if you say anything otherwise, remember, I have a silencer and you don't. Oh. What? Wait, what? (laughs) Like, you know, when people start talking shit, it's like, this conversation's over. I can't talk to you because you don't have a silencer and I'm not going to admit knowing you. Yeah, yeah. Where's your silencer? I don't have one. This can't be found. So I used to know a guy named Max. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, what's that little red dot over (laughs) <laughs> and Max just died. You get it? <laughs> okay, well, uh, I can see by the, the little hand moving towards the seven that it is almost time to call this a day. Um, I think we, we, we've made a lot of progress on our, our pre- preparedness for the zombie apocalypse. I would like to advise everyone to pick up the zombie survival guide. Uh, it comes with equipment lists and everything that you possibly could need to save your life. And... Um, one of these horrible scenarios. Uh, any last words from anyone else? Just stay safe, people. I mean, in the unlikely event that does occur, you've got to be smart. you got to know what to do. So, plan ahead. That's the best advice you can have for any situation is plan ahead. For all those who want to go, go out in a glorious blaze of glory, I will drive around in my motorcycle standing upon it naked with barrettes in my hair. I shall summon the brave to my side. Okay, anyways. Um, and on that note, I, I think, need a shower. Oh, well, it's true, but before we, we, we cut out, when, when are we going to do the next podcast? If we do a next podcast, what's our topic? I think we're going to let people write in. Okay. Oh, Indeed. Okay. All right, well, this has been the first Comeback Kids podcast. How are they going to write in? Go Look, don't bother me with these details, all right? I'm an idea guy, Yeah. All right? 
All right. Um, Big picture. That's me. You can email us at the Comeback Kids. Don't we have a MySpace page that you set up? Yeah, we do. That's www.com, myspace. www.myspace.com. Yes. Slash. Forward slash Red Skulls, White Stripes. Send us a message there. Or email us at thecomebackkids at gmail.com. There you go. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for dealing with our lunacy. And try to stay safe in the next uh, zombie apocalypse. Good night, everybody. All right.